and welcome to the fourth installment of A Revolutionary Minute. This video series from Quincy Historical Society, Quincy 400, and QATV aims to honor and celebrate the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution, recognizing events both significant and obscure here in Quincy, Massachusetts, and beyond. On this date, 250 years ago, September 21st, 1773, in London, England, John Adams was voted into membership in the Society of the Supporters of the Bill of Rights. This is actually less impressive than it may sound. We'll get to that. But the fact that an English group offered membership to Adams, who had not yet even set foot in Britain, provides a window onto the relations between American patriots and their friends in England. It's part of the classic story of the American Revolution that prominent English politicians such as William Pitt the Elder and Edmund Burke opposed the Crown's policy towards the American colonies as ill-advised and against its own best interests. But others in England saw themselves and the Americans as partners in a common cause. And since the 1960s, historians have appreciated how much Americans drew inspiration from English history and from their English contemporaries. Both groups saw themselves as fighting for the rights of Englishmen that were established in the long struggles of the 1600s and that were now under threat from King George III and his circle of advisors. The most high profile of these English radicals was John Wilkes. The Society of the Supporters of the Bill of Rights was, in effect, the John Wilkes Super PAC. Wilkes remains controversial down to the present day. He was a libertine, a master of publicity, and probably a political opportunist. But from 1763 to 1780, he was a dedicated fighter for the rights of ordinary people, freedom of the press, and due process in justice. The ordinary people of England adored him, and the American patriots admired him. In 1769, when he had been imprisoned and denied his seat in Parliament, the Sons of Liberty, including John Adams, rallied to his support. And when the American Revolution came, Wilkes supported the American cause. John Hancock and Samuel Adams corresponded with Wilkes. John Adams evidently did not. What Adams really thought of Wilkes and whether he accepted membership into the society, we don't know. The cover letter accompanying the announcement of John Adams's election to the society expressed great pleasure to find so very respectable a gentleman of America disposed to unite with the friends of liberty in England for our mutual safety and defense. But the American sense of their rights and responsibilities was changing. Over the next two years, Adams would move from thinking of the rights of Englishmen to thinking of rights endowed by nature and of the necessity of American independence. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll join us for the next Revolutionary Minute.